Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com here with some advice for you about Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, the minimum system requirements for Adobe Lightroom Classic are not very demanding according to Adobe's guidance. Even a very, very entry level system can operate Lightroom Classic. However, it depends to some extent on what you're planning. And if you plan to have a very intense workload or you intend to do professional work, it may be necessary to take a look at some more considerations about what kind of PC build you should be going for. Now, if you're processing hundreds or thousands of images a week, it is a good idea to rely on a mid to high performance PC. And that's what we're going to be looking at uh, if you need that in this video. Firstly, we're going to talk about the CPU. Currently, the most powerful CPUs at the moment are Intel's 12th generation, 12th generation Core i7 and Core i9 CPUs. Now these have the efficiency cores for light work and performance cores for heavier work. The Core i9 12900 CPUs, uh, which are the most powerful ones, include models with onboard graphics and those without. Now I'm going to have affiliate links to these products in the description and it really does help the channel a lot if you use those when buying the products. Whichever you go for, I would recommend getting a discrete graphics card to go alongside these. Ideally, these would be an NVIDIA RTX card or a Radeon Pro card if you intend to use Photoshop or to do video editing alongside Lightroom Classic. If you have no such special requirements, then going for one of AMD's gaming cards may make more sense from a money point of view. Now, one challenge with the 12th generation Intel CPUs is the amount of power they consume. That's the case for both the Core i7 and the Core i9s, which uh, the Core i7s are the slightly less powerful ones. The Core i9s are the most powerful ones. These guys are power hungry beasts and consume a lot of energy and release tons of heat. You're going to need an excellent CPU cooler to get the very best performance, especially if you intend to overclock. Ideally, you'll be using a liquid cooler, but a heavy metal air cooler can do nearly as well. If all of this seems a bit too much, then a mid-level build may be the one to go for. You could try for the 5000 series AMD CPUs, either the ones which are the most recent AMD CPUs. These are much less energy hungry and will allow you to work with a much wider range of coolers. And the rule of thumb, although it doesn't apply in every case, is that they are more affordable than the Intel CPUs. In particular, I draw your attention to these two, the Ryzen 5700G and the Ryzen 5600G. These are referred to as APUs by AMD the A stands for accelerated and their claim to fame is they come with onboard graphics which are powerful enough to accelerate most of Lightroom Classic's performance. They are also very affordable right now in terms of price. If you do go for these ones and later decide you want a to add a discrete graphics card, you should see the video I made recommending which graphics card to use with these APUs. I'll link to that below. They are currently the least expensive route to putting together a capable mid-level Lightroom Classic PC. And it really is hard to fault them on the, for the budget-oriented PC builder. Uh, they also don't need exceptional cooling. If you intend to overclock these, they can do a fantastic overclock sometimes. I have a series of videos on overclocking them, which you definitely want to watch. Lightroom Classic loves memory. The minimum system memory you need is eight gigabytes and the minimum graphics memory, and that's the memory within the graphics uh, system is two gigabytes. Now, whilst Lightroom Classic will work with the system with those specs, I strongly recommend bumping up those numbers. Especially, I think a minimum of 32 gigabytes of system RAM is essential if you're processing large numbers of images. If you're a professional photographer, whatever memory you throw at Lightroom Classic, no matter how much, it will find a way of using it. 64 gigabytes, it will use it. I think even 128 gigabytes, it will use quite a lot of that. 
Finally, let's talk about the monitor. In an ideal world, you should work with a professional wide gamut color monitor for editing, like the BenQ Photo View monitors, the Dell UltraShot Premier Color mo monitors, or the specialist Azo monitors, which are designed for photo editors. However, if you need something less expensive, I have a set of recommendations for budget monitors. Uh, as always, the links to the videos will be in the description. Finally, consider getting a color calibration kit to keep the monitor colors true and accurate. All monitors experience a kind of color shift in color accuracy as they age and as you use them and regular calibration will help to correct this. Guys, that is it for this video. I hope you find, found some of that useful. I'll see you guys in the next one.